Hi, in this video I will show you a quick overview of uh, B1i payment uh, with Authorize.net. Um, the add-on uh, is just being installed like any other add-on, uh, so I won't really go through uh, how you do that. But once it's up and running, uh, I'm running via code right now. Um, the first thing you need to do is you need to choose your, your gateway. Uh, so Authorize is one of those gateways, Cybersource and all the difference are, are uh, in the system. Um, in this situation, I already chosen authorize.net, but the way you, you would normally see it is you will see the screen the first time you press the configuration, uh, and it will ask you for uh, which of the gateways we support uh, you want to use. Um, if it's just for demo purposes, uh, you don't need to have uh, anything with authorize.net. You can just go into demo mode uh, and uh, have everything run like it would be in live, but it would never take any data away from, from any system. So um, when you choose that, you get to the configuration. And here you can choose different things on how you want it to, to run, uh, what currency you're, you're working against, uh, and uh, if you want to do some additional checks and such. such. Um, the most important part for, for demo is uh, that you uh, go into authorization and, and choose how you want to the thing to react to different uh, documents. So we can work on against sales orders, deliveries, down payment, invoice, and reserve invoice. Um, so for example, I have set up the scenario that every time I add a document, I should show an authorization pop-up while in delivery, I don't really want to use this demo, and in invoice, I could also set that it would do this, but let me start with, with invoice. Um, there's a lot of different options. You can, of course, press F1 to see what, what's going on. Um, during settlement, you can also go in and say if things should automatically settle or not. Um, so, for example, every time you do the AI invoice, you could settle. In this case, I won't, won't do that. It would just do the settlement against the, the system, but I would like to show you uh, our system uh, for batch settlement as well. Um, you also need, if you want to go in and do incoming payments, you need to set up the uh, what the different uh, the different uh, credit cards are against SAP. So is it iPayment knows American Express and what is that in SAP, uh, MasterCard and, and so on. You can set up some, if you do some batch refund, you need to set up a, a deal account on, on what uh, those outgoing payments should go on to. And finally, you can set up some internal messages th that should go along uh, if you have integrations or if you uh, do some of the more advanced stuff. So we just say updates and we should get our system uh, up and running for our first authorization. In order to work with our new configuration, uh, let's go to a sales order. And uh, let's choose our trusted Maxitech here for a test demo. On the sales order, we now have a tab called iPayment. And from in here, I can either go in and put in some credit cards. Um, these credit cards can also be, if you go to business partner, be put in directly from here, the system. Um, you can also choose, if you like, instead to go in and have a one-time credit card. Then it will only be saved against the sales order itself. Uh, but for this case, let's just add a credit card. I don't have any credit cards in this system, but I press add. And what it will tell me is it will open up a browser, because that's where uh, you need to put in the data in order to be compliant with uh, all the rules of uh, storing credit cards. We don't, we cannot show them inside our screen. Um, and then you need to put in a card number and that card number for demo purposes, it's also documented in the manual, is a four with uh, 15 uh, ones after it. Like that. An expiration date somewhere in the future. Let's say 17 and one, two, three as uh, the validation code. Billing information you don't really need to put in, and uh, that uh, is not needed. And we save the information, and we have a credit card. So um, the message we saw so before needs to say refresh in order to see the, cre the credit card. So we can see the credit card is, is in there now um, with our information uh, in the system. 
So uh, we now have a credit card, um, and my configuration said that whenever I add this document, it should show up a pop-up of authorization. There was again other options to have that you only get it by right click or it happens automatically behind the scenes uh, if you have the credit card already. So uh, I'm just selling a simple item for 350 US. I will add the document. And once the document is added, the authorization screen will be shown. There we go. Uh, and it asks us what kind of card do you want to use? Uh, I didn't set this as default, else it would have automatically taken that. Um, and I can go in and see if I want to have a markup so I can reserve more money than actually is on the system, uh, just in case for additional freight later on and so on. Uh, it would only at the end, of course, settle for the exact uh, document, but right now I don't want any markup. So I will just authorize for 300 and and 30. I authorize, and once the, we have talked with the gateway, we are now authorized. And you can see in I payment, we can see that authorization. Let's have a look here. So we have the authorization. When we authorized, then at some point that authorization would only uh, hold a certain number of days, depending on the. Uh, on the, the gateway. Um, but we're quick here. Uh, we are ready to invoice this. So let's go to invoice. First, uh, by the way, I actually didn't mention, but uh, the reason why this business partner is set up to be using credit cards is this iPayment field down here, where I actually go, went in and told the system, because you need to tell what kind of business partners you actually are running with, with credit cards. Uh, perhaps not everyone, uh, so only once having that would actually show that pop-up. So that was the reason I, I put that in prior to this video. Um, but uh, let's move on to the invoice. And right now I didn't set it to auto settle or anything. I could make that, uh, make it do that uh, if needed. Uh, but uh, right now uh, it doesn't really show me anything in here because the, the authorization is up here. I could have gone to the invoice directly and, and done the authorization, but uh, most people have the, the normal document flow in SAP. Someone even have the delivery between, but it, it will know uh, what to do. So if I add the document just as normal, I have now just created my invoice, but I haven't interacted with, with the system. So if you we look at the sales order, it's closed, but the authorization is still there and nothing have happened. And in iPayment, we can see that authorization from the sales order now, but again, nothing have happened, this uh, invoice is open. Again, I could have set up a conf in configuration that it ha would have auto settled, but uh, many people uh, tend to instead go in and settle once a day. And that happens during under banking with bad settlement. So in batch settlement, you can filter out what kind of invoices you want. And you can see my 460 is here. And for the amount uh, we, we talked about. So I can settle now by just marking the thing and say settle. And want to talk to the, the authorized uh, gateway, it will come up and say, OK, this document is now settled. Um, for the amount. You could, of course, uh, do partial settlements, uh, so you could go in and, and only settle uh, for less money, uh, or, or if, if it was more money, it would have voided the authorization and made a new authorization. If we look at the sales order again, it has complete uh, information about that it's now settled against this invoice. Uh, the authorization is gone because it was now settled. Um, and uh, we have the incoming payment. We can see that in the system. And of course, our invoice is now as well uh, closed. And the payment information is up here again. And we can go in and see that it happened against this credit card with this number. And we have reconciliation number and voucher number. So you can later on uh, reconcile with, with your bank when you actually get the money from, from the, the provider.
this is the basic features. Uh, you can, of course, do batch authorizations. So if you have a lot of sales ordered in, and you can authorize them in a batch. You could batch settlement, as I, I showed. You can refund ag uh, again if needed. Um, so uh, there's uh, all these additional options. But this was just a short overview on how uh, authorized.net works uh, with the different settlement uh, authorizations and settlements. So thank you for listening, and uh, I hope it was beneficial.